John Axon was a railway man to steam trains born and bred. He was an engine driver at Edgley Loco Shed. For forty years he followed and served the Iron Way. He lost his life upon the track one February day. Ministry of Transport and Civil Aviation, 10th of July, 1957. Sir, I have the honour to report the result of my inquiry into the collision which occurred on Saturday, the 9th of February, 1957. When the 11.5am freight train from Buxton to Arpley got out of control as it was descending a steep incline on the down line and overtook and collided violently with the rear of the 8.45am freight train from Rosely to Edgeley. I regret to report that driver Axon and the guard of the Rosely freight train were killed. We present The Ballad of John Axon, the real life story of a railwayman told by the men who knew him and worked with him and set into song by Ewan McCall. The year was 1957. The morning bright and gay On the 9th of February John Axon drove away In a class 8 locomotive From Buxton he did go On the road to Chapel on Le Frith His steam brake pipe did blow dark when I got to the shed up to Saturday morning. Jack was waiting there. Come on, Ron, he said, we want to get finished. Let me see. You're never early at that time in the morning. It's bad enough having to get there at the right time. And as I walked in the driver's lobby, there were a lot of choice comments going on around about the weather. Morning, Ronnie. Morning, Morning. Very rough. Morning. Yes, one, five, six, please, Johnny. Thank you. Too rough. What engine have we got? 
Thank you, Alright. Come on, let's go and get ready. I'm oh, in a re mood this morning. Hey, do you? Come on, wife's comfortable. Hey, I'm road is a hard road and the work is never ending. Working night and day on the iron way with the boys who keep the engines rolling. Engine driver's got to be in the blood for a start. If it's not in your blood to stand the erratic hours, you'll never stand the pace. You see, as a young lad at 15 years of age, you're prepared for all this. And uh, the railway life, to my mind, to the proper railwoman, it always comes first. Well, I started when I was, well, I was just turned 14 when I started. You just went to your work with your, your chuck under your arm and that was that, you were brought up to it. Uh, and uh, that's why today you'll get the, the, the proper driver. He thinks nothing of going to London and booking off because railways, it, it's in his blood. The old railway, man, it was a tradition. It was part of your life. It went through, railways went through the back of your spine like Blackpool went through rock. You sign on at the loco ship, they put you to the cleaning. In your dungarees, cleaning super D's, you're a sweeper, up a brewer, up a shovel, swing a spanner, bring a steam, raise a fire, drop a general cook and bottle washer, learning how to keep them rolling. Hey lad, will you fetch me a bucket of red oil for a red tail lump? Charlie! Hey Charlie! On your toes, clean that muck out of number five. Look alive there. Where have you been for that oil? Arabia? See the job on number three. They got a strip up. Ginger! Leave the job you're working on. Help the fit up. Hold the light. Pass the wrench. The one inch span up off the bench. The one inch ream up. Hey, clean up! Do this, do that, get me this, get me that Rush job on number eight, working late, got a date I'll never make it You'll have to break it Just a bloody skivvy, that's me Two years, five years, ten years Fifteen years of clean-up oh. <laughs> huh. When the work interferes with the girls, well, you give up the work, you see Oh, <laughs> oh you... <laughs> Well, I started on the railway when I was 15, and I was 32 before I was made a, a registered book fireman. When you've done your time at the local shed and had your share of trouble, on the open plate, you're the driver's mate, and you're married to a lousy shovel. Come on, let's have a little bit of ice cream here. Come on, come on, I have to get up in the morning, not same as you resting all night. 8188. All tools. Never mind myself, I'm in good condition. Not been resting all night. No. How do you know? Bottle of oil. I'll bring the other one when I've used this. Yeah. Not alright? Yeah. Okay, and how do you feel? Oh, very well. Very well, you look it and all. Okay. It's check the water, check the tools, and chuck the plumbing coal in. Give the gauge a wipe, check injector pipe, now it's... Swing, swing your shovel at the double, give a rock, watch the clock, steam raising sweat, running back, aching bones, shaking fire, and fire and keep a rolling. You know, when I first started firing, we had what they called the old well tender. You had to shovel the coal right off the level of the footplate. And it were real hard work because you had to range down with your back to get all of your coal, to get it into the firebox. But then they broke married man's tender out. Oh, and wasn't that a dream? You hadn't got bend as far. You could just shovel coal and into the firebox it went. 
And by God, don't married men took another lease on life. You bend your back, almost double. Feed that coal-hungry fire, swing that shovel, that's a fireman's trade. You've got your long-handled shovel. Three and a half feet of sweat, polished wood, and a narrow steel blade. <laughs> Swing your long and the shovel. Hear that shovel ring. Swing your steel blade and shovel. Hear that fire sing. Give us some rock. A round at a time. Fire your signal. Along the line Put your weight behind your shovel From your middle swing Swing your steel bladed shovel From your shoulder swing One at the front One at the back one on each side, and that's the next. Sweat on your back, sweat in your eyes, feed the fire, the steam will rise. Bend the dust, let the turn the tide, tons of coal to burn, green steam swallowing coal, brace your legs to take the road. No, fireman, come on, she's lagging, get some rock on. You've got your long handle shovel, then make it ring. Take your steel blade and shovel on the tender ring. Sweating it out eight hours a day. Burning your keep on the iron way. You know, uh, drivers are not all the same. Some can make it hard for a fireman, some can make it easy. But Jack Axon was one of those that made it very easy for a fireman. I mean, he was always ready for a joke and, well, he made the day seem short while he were at work. He was a grand chap. When you've shoveled a million tons of coal some ten or twelve years later And you're only three is of raising steam then they hand to you your driver's paper Hello, what can you go see, please? Okay. Give me 71 card, please. 71. Very much. I was 21 years on the footplate before I was passed as a driver. I went out to, for the first time in 1920, and after 21 years, I was passed as a driver. And I always remember this, that the old driver that I fired for used to tell me, wait till you get to be a driver and you'll find out that you go more tired than you did as a fireman. And I never used to believe him, but it's true. You're on your own, mate, king of the footplate. You've got a load, mate. What's the road, mate? Get her through, mate. It's up to you, mate. She's a class eight engine. She's as tough as they come. Weighs well over a hundred tons. She's a pull-up, an iron horse. You've got nine tons of coal. You've got 4,000 gallons of water. You've got to measure. Her boiler pressure is 225 pounds an inch. You've, You've got, got to snort her. In the old days, that engine was his life. It was his child. Uh, you had some, they had all different the ideas. Uh, yellow fat for to keep her from running out, and you had some with the thick dick plastering it down the actual boxes. and They all had... Uh, 
their own little ideas, but he maintained he was keeping that engine on the road by hook or by crook because, hey, I mean, the, the, the whole life was round the engine. It doesn't matter where you come from, what colour you are, what religion, anything, it doesn't make any difference if you've got that feeling that you want to be a driver, if you've got it in your blood, you'll make a railway man. You see, there's one thing about railway work, especially footplate work. You must have a leaning for that job. I've had a West Indian fireman with me on long distance trains, and he's been as good a fireman as I've ever had on the job. He definitely has it in his blood, and he comes from Jamaica. You give her water, you give her coal, hand on the regulator, watch her roll. Mama, I swear as long as I live, going to serve me steam locomotive. Dirty tunnels, blinding smoke, cover your head, mate, or else you choke. Mama, me heart and me soul, I give, going to serve me steam locomotive. Got me paddle, iron, that's a ten foot spoon. Got me pricker and me dart like a long harpoon. Mama, I tell you positive. Going to serve me steam locomotive. You gotta watch the line and get her there in time and keep her rolling. La, la, keep your hand on the brake, she's a monster la, 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 place that you're controlling. You can sing the praises of the aviators, rocket pilots and ocean navigators. Arctic explorers and deep sea divers, but me, I sing of the engine drivers. Mama, listen to me, narrative, going to serve me steam locomotive. What a feeling you have when you get off the ship. You've got the engine, you've got the control of it. And what a feeling, I'm cock of the bunk. There's nobody can take a rise out of me now. She's mine. Come on, me old beauty, and off we go. The moon's out, and the countryside, it's lovely. Look at that hill over there with the moon shining on it and the trees and the valley. It's beautiful. On we go. What a feeling. She answers to every touch. Some more rock on, lad. Yes, it's grand. Oh, look. They lit up in the mill across the way. Somebody else is working on nights besides us. He looked there, sun's coming over the hills, and what a sight, England at dawn. It's been worth losing a night's sleep for this as if only the people of England could see it. England, England, and there's nowhere like it at dawn. Bobby? Yeah? 8188, light to Adwood, 611 Buxton. Right? Right, on, eh? Well, here we go again. <laughs>
in Working night and day on the Iron Way With a local driver, Sturdy Rises, Lodging Turner's Mile Burners, 11 quid a week, earners, we're the boys who keep them rolling The rain was gently falling when they started down the line And on the way to Buxton the sun began to shine But the steam brake pipe was leaking and a wisp of steam did rise The fireman he reported this when in Buxton they arrived When we left Edgeley, it was raining cats and dogs. But on the way up, it cleared beautiful. And by the time we got at Buxton, it was like a spring morning. The sun was shining under a cloud in the sky. And you, you get a keenness up there, it would have been very high up. And with the sun shining, it, was, it made you feel real good. By the time we'd finished our engine duties on the ash pit and that, cleaned the fire and coaled and watered it, and turned ready for the journey back, we got settled on a shed road and Jack made the repair card out for the brake steam pipe. So I got a disc card, took it to the charge on fitter and then I went to get the can of tea. When I arrived back, the fitter was just sending his mate for an inch and a half spanner to tighten this union nut to the brake disc. And after they had done the job, we started chatting about uh, what we was going to do uh, when we got finished. I was going to watch Stockport, Stockport County, that was playing at home. And Jack, he was going to have a couple of hours in bed. We'd been up since four o'clock that morning, but he was going to a big dinner at the Alma Lodge that evening. Jack kept himself very young with his social life. He liked a lot of dancing and parties. Other chaps, like they, have, they like to uh, football and uh, play golf, garden, and as we don't get many Saturday afternoons off, when we do get one, we really like to enjoy it. Come all you British local men who travel the Iron Way, there's a long weekend and money to spend, it's time to draw your pay. You've done your 80 or fortnight and now it's time for play. So off with your dirty dungarees, your time is yours today. We'll give us some rock and we'll beat the clock and send her on the way. For every train is an express train upon a Saturday. The missus is standing at the door, your dinner is on the hob. So bung your driver's ticket in, forget all about the job. Get dolled up in your Saturday best, the match will be starting soon. So hurry up, mate, and don't be late, it's Saturday afternoon. We'll give us some rock and we'll beat the clock and send her on her way. For every train is an express train upon a Saturday. There's some that's fond of gardening and some that like a jill. And some of the lads, they play the pools and sometimes make a kill. Some like a potato pie supper and an extra hour in bed. But everyone likes the moment when he signs off at the shed. We'll give us some rock and we'll beat the clock and send her on away. 
For every day's an express train upon a Saturday. So come all your gallant loco men, steam and diesel too. You lads who serve the iron road, let's drink a glass or two. And join me in the chorus, all you who like a tune. The railwayman's friend is the long weekend and Saturday afternoon. So long to the driver's lobby, so long the controller's room. For while we're here, we can't be there on Saturday afternoon. Open the cab roof, have a breakfast thing going first. And the fitter, when he came on the foot flight, he said, What a beautiful morning, and he grand to be alive. And Jack said, shh, shh, shh. It's not finished yet. After we'd had his breakfast, we came off the shed in good time so we could get our train ready. And if the Rosalie Edgley was late, we could take his path in front of him and get finished an hour earlier. But this Edgley man was on time. And he passed us like wearing us. The guard, Fred Creamer. He said, we've curly again this morning. And that was the guard that we ate. You see, and we'd had him working up with us all week. Then we had to wait while the Rose Ladsley got to the top of the bank and cleared Bevington's. See the right away signal and away we went. The repair was done and the train made up when they left them Buxton sidings and, and the time was just eleven five and the sun it was a shining. Double eight was the number, Scanlon was the fireman, and the guard in the van was Alfred Ball, and the driver was John Axon. Her wagons numbered 33, and the 20 ton rear brake van. She was carrying coke, wood pulp and coal and fire bricks and pig iron. Then down line out of Buxton climbs, she was pulling nice and steady. And the bank engine was pushing behind and the guard's brake stick was ready. Normally, when we're approaching the top of the bank, we slow down and automatically come to a stop. And the guard comes up and pins so many brakes down on the wagons to assist us going down the incline. John Axon looked at the rolling hills and he found them to his liking. And he thought of his early courting days, the days when he went hiking. Oh yes, Jack and I were keen on rambling. In fact, that was how we met. I lived at Stratford, Jack lived at Stockport. I used to get the train at Manchester and he used to join it at Stockport, go to Edale and hike. Sometimes we went moonlight rambles. Well, first ramble that uh, I ever went, I went with three friends and we were going to Castleton. Anyhow, we got lost. So we decided that we'd go back from Edale. We got to Edale, we found that the last train had gone. So we didn't know what to do. And uh, then we saw two young men coming along and uh, said, you've missed the last train, haven't you? So, because we said, yes. So what are you going to do now? So we said, we don't know. So I said, well, you'd better come to the Edale Hotel. So, of course, we stayed there till we got a car from Sheffield and landed back in Manchester about four o'clock in the morning. 
that was the first time that I met Jack that day. Of course, we arranged to go another ramble with them. And uh, after that, we went several rambles with them. That was how it started, really. I am a free man on Sunday I've been over Snowden I've slept upon Croton I've camped by the Waynestones as well I've sunbathed on Kinder Been burnt to a cinder And many more things I can tell Me rucksack has off been me pillow The heather has off been me bed and sooner than part from the mountains I think I would rather be dead I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way I get all me pleasure the half moorland way I may be a wage slave on Monday But I am a free man on Sunday I once loved a maid, a spot welded by trade She was fair as the rowan in blue And the blue in her eyes matched the blue mullen skies And I wooed her from April till June On the day that we should have been married I went for a ramble instead For sooner than part from the mountains I think I would rather be dead I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way I get all the pleasure the hard morning way I may be a wage slave on Monday But I am a free man on Sunday We used to have some lovely times, Jack and I, rambling winter and summer and didn't matter whether it was raining, we used to go every Sunday because sometimes, of course, he worked Saturdays, so but it was every Sunday we went. We made a lot of friends with the, being members of the Manchester Federation. We met many of their members on our walks and Jack, he liked walking a long way, seeing how far he could go. Where I would rather not go so far, but we used to go some very long rambles. We'd been over kinder. He took a party over kinder. Most of our walks were around Edale and Hope and Castleton. And used to go through the Winnets and Cavedale, Mam Tor, all those spots. But we always finished at Castleton, came back from Hope. Whenever we uh, hiked, we always came back from Hope. John Oxen smiled at the thought that later he'd be celebrating And he smiled when he thought to the Stockport pub where a pint of mild was waiting John Oxen was a dancing man, on his pins he was light and nimble And often he'd stand on the old footplate, whistling an old time jingle himself young with his social activities like this uh, dancing and parties and I always had a little bit of a song like on the foot plate a very nice chap for me to work for I like going to parties and dancing we used to love the uh, music and it was always whistling the tunes wasn't really very interested in dancing at first, but I've always liked dancing, so he thought he'd try, and he really enjoyed it. But, of course, railway men can't go every week. They have to just go when the turns permit them to go. <laughs> and he was always talking about trains, and, uh, of course, my boys would say, why don't you shut the uh, shed door now you've come away? But he really loved trains. Come all you young men. Me out walking into the country, he hugged me 
my dear Molly, oh, won't you be mine? Just give me the signal and let's clear the line. My fires, they are burning, me steam, it is high. If you don't take the break up, I think I shall die. I told him, young fellow, now don't make so free, for no local fireman shall ever have me. He'll hug you and kiss you, and when you're in need, he races away at the top of his speed. A sailor comes home when the voyage is done. A soldier gets weary of following the drum. A collier will cleave to his loved one for life. But the fireman's one love is the engine, his wife. Jack, uh, a very methodical person, made little diagrams of all the work that was in the links and all that sort of thing. Everything went in his little book. Everything was recorded that he had, that he did. John Oxen kept a little book and in it there was written the class, the type and the number of every engine he had driven. What's your number? What's your name? Collecting trains, a fine game. I've got more than you. Waiting for the RP train on the road to Cheagle. Saw the local passing by. Pop goes the diesel. Stink. You're not mine, you're not. Like the puppy billies. Oh, two diesels. Of course. It's gagged up diesels. Wales. My dad's a railwayman. Steam train, steam train, there goes a super D. Write the name and number down for 0193. Steam train, steam train, racing down the line. Thirty wagons full of golden line. Class 8, never late, she'll arrive on time. 48188, pulling a load of fish. Steam train on the line. Rattle, rattle, crash, watch the gummy pass, like a rocky flash. That's a train for London. Blackpool. Lady Cadaver. Blackpool? There you got that. Oh. Southport. Southport. Fleetwood. Oh, I got that. Blackpool to Manchester. Oh, no. Man- London to Manchester. Oh, yeah. Birmingham to Manchester. <laughs> Chuggy, chuggy, chug, like a little bug crawling on a rug. That's a shunting bogey. Class A's an express passenger train. B's an ordinary passenger train. C's an express once again. Just for carrying parcels. E and F of H we know. H is fate that travels slow. K's a local train that goes between the local stations. Well, stop, last thing. I've got such more. It's a diesel. Three diesels on the road. I think they yeah, are diesel for a uh, bucket. To Winnie! To Sammy! To I don't know whether it was in my blood or not because I, I remember when I was quite a bit of a kid I used to go on the Iron Bridge there watching them until because I was lucky you see in them days they only used to have a couple of lads at 14 in the shop. 
They joined to the driver's steam brake pipe Begun to sweat a little By the time they were halfway up the hill It was coming in a steady trickle As we were climbing up the bank, again, this uh, faint wisp of steam came from a union, not giant. So we bound it with a couple of rags. We got, uh, we was going again, like, for, uh, got about halfway up the bank, and then uh, it came up in a spiral, and we both came across having a loop, like. Under the large ejector steam valve, there's a length of one and one-eighth piping. It connects with a driver's brake valve. The connecting point is a joint of brass. A one and one-eighth steam pipe fixed in a threaded joint rests on asbestos packing and is sealed sealed with brazing metal. A hundred and twenty-five tons of engine, six hundred and fifty tons behind, and the boiler pressure to twenty-five pounds per square inch. And the men, two fragile bodies, flesh and blood and brittle bone, carbon and water, nerves and dreams. Power from coal. Power from water. Power. Imprisoned in a one and one eighth pipe. Press the steam, watch is the tired metal. seconds and then the realization came what had happened that the brake pipe had gone condition on the foot where oh it was horrible you only had to put your your face in it what it feel like an onion The engine had reached a distant signal when the broken steam pipe began to scream. John Axon and his mate couldn't reach the driver's brake for the cab was full of scalding steam. Poor oh boys, the cab was full of scalding steam. John Axon, he knew that his regulator was still wide open and on full power. He couldn't turn it off for the way that it was blocked. And the cab was full of scalding steam, poor boys. The cab was full of scalding steam.
they hung on the side and they both took turns at shifting the regulator from afar. They prodded at the bar with the pricker and the dart, but they couldn't move the iron bar, brave boys. They couldn't move the iron bar. <laughs> Uh, hanging outside of the cab on the fireman's side. It was only a matter of seconds. You could be on the footplate at all. You know? And they put coats over our heads to try and get to the red laser. That was the main thing, to shut that, because we'd steam going on, and we'd no brake ourselves, and we're being pushed by an engine behind, and we're approaching the top then. Well, I, I got a fire iron out of the, the alcove at the side there, and tried to knock it down, but it was only a short red later, and it was in second red later. So it had to come right over and back again to shut. If it had been first port, we could have knocked it down and it would have automatically shut. With it being in second red later, it was no use, it was no possibility. John Axon, he got to the fireman's side And over the scream of the steam did say We'll have to get outside if we want to stay alive Or oh, this'll be our dying day, poor boys Or oh, this'll be our dying day The guard, he was waiting to pin down the brakes The train, it didn't slow down that day He stood in the van with the brake stick in his hand And he knew she was a runaway, poor boy He knew she was a runaway I'm watching him go over the top, we've left the banker He's gone over the top more than what he should do This man's failing to stop, we're still going there's something wrong on the engine. On goes the brake. John Axon, he cried to his fireman, jump. It is the only thing you can do. Well, I hang on the side and I'll take a little ride For I've got to see the journey through, brave boy. I've got to see the journey through. Jack realised the position was hopeless. He was still steaming up the bank and gathering speed. And he ordered me to jump, to try and get some wagon brakes down, and to draw the guard's attention to put his brake on as hard as he could. I jumped and I stumbled a bit on the ballast, picked myself up, grabbed the brakes as the wagons was passing to drop them, but it was an impossibility to pin them. I got about six or seven down, but it was no use, it was only bouncing off. And then, uh, of course, the train's going away from me, and the guard's coming towards me, so I chased back to the guard, shouting to him, Alf, put the brake on, we're away. John Axon, he was all alone, there on the engine side. The train, it reached the hilltop, and began the downhill ride The sun it was still shining The sky was still as blue He gambled with his life that day And this John Axon knew After the guards van passed me I looked round again And saw it disappearing over the hill King of the footplate Ooh, ooh Johnny Ooh, me Johnny What makes you do the things you do, me Johnny Ooh, why do you have to see it through, me Johnny
It's a seven ball drop from Bevington Top, oh Johnny! It's one in fifty eight and you've no steam freight, oh Johnny! She's picking up speed and the power is free, it's a prayer you need, but you'll never make it Johnny! Gradient all the way into Whaley, seven mile gradient. One in seventy, one in sixty, one in fifty eight. Way! Duffles passed. Going too fast to see if they saw me hanging outside the cab. Down the curving line, through the hill of limestone, he tumbled. Every turn of the four-foot wheels Every lunge of the smooth-armed piston Every thrust of the two great cylinders Sings of a man's destruction Was I born for this? To hang like a fly on an iron wall Helpless on a moving wall To die Out of blood and oil, twisted metal, splintered bone. What was it that Jim said one day in the shed? Jim said, Oh, was it in the pub? What was it that Jim said about steam, about power? With a steam locomotive, you create the power, you maintain the power. And you you control control it. There's the power! First the boil of pressure, the burning coal that made it, the fire and the air which fed it. First the water which boiled and turned to steam. First the steam brake and the nut which connects with the steam brake pipe. First the brass of the steam brake valve. Curse the nerd of the steam brick valve. Curse the steam. Do what he can for his brothers By his deeds you shall know him By the work of his hands By the friends who will mourn him By the love that he bore By the gift of his courage And the life that he gave
On the 3rd of May, 1957, Mrs. Gladys Axon received the following letter. 10 Downing Street, Whitehall, 2nd of May, 1957. Madam, I have the honour to inform you that the Queen has been graciously pleased to approve the Prime Minister's recommendation that the George Cross be awarded posthumously to your husband, John Axon. John Axon was a railway man to steam trains born and bred. He was an engine driver at Edgeley Loco Shed. He was a man of courage and served the iron way. He gave his life upon the track one February day. The Ballad of John Axon was the work of Ewan McCall and Charles Parker. The lyrics were written by Ewan McCall, who also, with the exception of two songs set to traditional airs, composed the music and himself sang the part of narrator. The instrumental arranging and musical direction was by Peggy Seeger, who also played the banjo. The vocalists were A.L. Lloyd, Isla Cameron, Stan Kelly, Dick Lovelace, Charles Mayo and Colin Dunn. And the instrumentalists were Jim Bray, bass, Terry Brown, trumpet, Bob Clark, fiddle, John Cole, harmonica, Fitzroy Coleman, guitar, who also sang the West Indian Fireman Calypso, Brian Daly, guitar, Alf Edwards, English concertina, Billy Locke, drums, Bobby Mickleborough, trombone, and Bruce Turner, clarinet. <laughs> 